dead. One person is watching. It says go. it on the bottom here. Oh, okay. Reed joined. <laughs> Reed did? Yes. On Instagram. Mom and Reed. <laughs> Look at this guy. And Bree Miller's back. All right, I love it. All right, so we only got nine views right now. It's fine. We're gonna start anyway because this one's fun. All right, guys. So we're gonna do this one a little different this time, okay? Because we're gonna make. Uh, there's a bunch of parts happening all at once. Um, but the most important part for today is actually gonna be the wine. So I'm gonna show you how to open up a bottle of wine. I'm going to show you how to drink the wine because I'm going to drink during this one this time. All right, so Falangina. Falangina to me is one of my favorite wines. Why? Because uh, my family is from this area, from Campania, Naples area. Falangina is great. You got to remember where it is. So if you're thinking about where Naples is and you're coming down to like the, the side of the boot, it's sitting on the water. So you're going to get a lot of minerality, ton of salinity off this. Plus to mention, it's right by uh, Mount Vesuvius. So all that volcanic soil is what really makes this wine intense. Um, so we're opening up a bottle of wine, all right? So start with your cork, screw, start with your cap, get that, stick it up against the side of it. And as you're turning the bottle, it's cutting the size of the cork or the side of the wrapper, all right? Once you get all the way across, you give it a little pop like that, Peel it off, and now you can see the cork. All right, throw that out because you don't want to cut yourself. Then open up the top, remove the screw part, and then you always try to go in on an angle. So I see the tip, the tip's right here, going on an angle, right? As you're going on an angle, you start to straighten it out and you start to twist your cork. I twist the cork screw, not the bottle. I don't really think it matters. I'm not a Psalm, but if I was, I really don't think it matters. Then, so this is a double-sided one. So first you push down this way, push in, pull up. Then you push the rest of it down, finish pulling up, and then try never to make it that stupid pop sound. You're not looking for that. That's just for Instagram, but we don't, we don't do that, all right? Not this Instagram. Not this Instagram. All right. So I love Falangina's. I'm gonna pour myself a little extra. We're gonna use this later to, to actually uh, cook with, um, but then we're gonna set it aside. So first things first, open up your wine. Salud, cheers. Makes us hello. Absolutely amazing. All right, set that aside. We're gonna drink that as we work. So, because... Reed said he, he was having a hard time opening wine yesterday. I know that about you, Reed. <laughs> All right, let's go. So we're gonna make the pasta. So we're actually making homemade pasta this time, all right? So you should have the recipe in front of you. You have your semolina flour, it's 200 grams. And then you have your 96 grams of water. Super simple, making pasta is really not that difficult when you're making the dough. The hardest part is the shaping part. Um, but we're gonna do it together, we're gonna do it nice and slow. We're gonna do this all very, very nice together. So you have two ways of doing it, one, in a bowl, which we're gonna do here. And the reason why is because it's gonna make it easier for cleanup after. Or two, you could dump it right onto your board, use the middle as a well, and then figure it out that way, all right? So we're gonna use a bowl here. Semolina, 200 grams in the bowl. Make sure all of it comes out. Then create a little well in the center. All right, then all 96 grams of water goes inside. Then again, just because I want to stay clean and be quick with this today, we're gonna to put a glove on, all right? So putting two to three fingers in the center part of it, start twirling around like this. Start creating a slurry as it seems, to, the, the name for it. Still going, still going. Once you get to a point where it's starting to look like that, where you're starting to see a paste, then I just go in there and just start mixing it all together. Don't be afraid. You could actually be rough with this. You actually need to be rough with it. 
Um, the more that you go and start to knead this dough, the better the tooth feel and the texture you're gonna get off of this, right? Because a lot of times what happens is you go to some of these restaurants and they don't, they don't, um, they don't need their pasta dough enough and then you end up with this pasta that really doesn't taste like anything, kind of gets lost in the sauce. Um, so we're gonna need this for quite a bit, all right? Geoff says, what's up, chef? Need you to come show my students how to make Let's pasta. do it, man, I'm ready. You let me know when. I'd love to. All right, now that you have that much left, I throw the rest on the board, that on top, get rid of your bowl. All right, now, now that most of the dirty part's done, we're gonna get into it like this. All right, so you mix it all together. You have a little bit of flour left on the table. You, you go to pull this apart here and you can see the inside part of this is super sticky, okay? So basically what I do is I utilize that to get the rest of this flour up. So I push down, a couple pushes down again, use it again. And basically just trying to incorporate all of that flour. You can see how much of it's already gone already. And then do the same thing. So literally starting like that, pulling, pushing and pulling. That's all you're trying to do, all right? So now, now that the dough is basically made, now comes the kneading process, all right? So the kneading process on this, best case scenario is 10 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna need this for about seven to 10 minutes just because I wanna get the rest of the stuff going. So the way I knead, I use my palm, I push out almost to the point where the dough is tearing just like that, and then I pull back in. Then I quarter turn, push back out, quarter turn, push back out, quarter turn, push back out, and it's just this motion, and it's always constant quarter turn, pushing and pulling, all right? So you can see my palm is doing all the work. I hope nobody did triceps today at the gym because you're gonna be in pain tomorrow. Um, but basically, you're, you're looking for this movement here. Not that movement, sorry guys. Wait, grab the one. That's <laughs> what happens when you're aggressive with the dough, it should be. All right, pushing and pulling, that's fine. And that's all you're trying to do, right? Get this dough really nice and beat up. You could already see the dough coming together. I mean, you could already see all of these really nice gluten textures over there already doing its thing. Just continue to do that, pushing and pulling. So this is literally five to 10 minutes. So for everybody that says I go a little too fast, we're gonna do this for five or 10 minutes, all right? Now, if you had somebody that was at home that could be helping you do this, this will go a little faster because while one person's kneading, we could be doing sauces. But I'm gonna do this with you guys, all right? So quarter turn every time. Keep going. Good time to ask questions is now since we're doing the same movement. So if anybody has a question, please let me know. Amelia and Sydney will be more than happy to sit there and shout them out. What's up, Jay? TRM. Love chef <laughs> All right, still going. So you could actually see it becoming more and more smooth. See, like now, now when I go to pull it, it kind of goes back together. That means you're forming glutens, and that's the good thing. That's what you want in pasta flour, right? If I were to go to pull this and it would call all the way through and it never came back, then you know that you didn't develop enough gluten in here, okay? Continue to go. Another, another five minutes of this, three to five minutes of this, and you'll be fine. It's a lot less dough than we normally would make, so it's not gonna be a big deal. Tanya Cole says, Chef Pat's the go. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so do this for another two minutes. Is this a dough you need to let rest? Yes, yeah, so we are gonna let this rest. We're gonna do it together. You'll see in a second, because by the time this is done resting, we're gonna have all of our sauce ready to go. All of my pasta dough that I make, I let rest, okay? So normally I do a 24 hour rest when we're doing it for the restaurant. Um, obviously you can do it for less if you wanted to. Um, I do 30 minutes to 24 hours, that's my favorite, all right? Anything less than that, and if you go to pull this or try to stretch it out, the pasta's just gonna come back and that's not what you're looking for, right? So a little bit more. All right, we're gonna stop right here. So now, take your dough, make sure it looks like a ball. All right, wrap it in plastic, put it in a bag, put it in a container, just like that. Put a top on it, 
or wrap it up, put it in your fridge, and we're gonna start making the sauce, all right? So, I'm gonna throw it right in that, that fridge right there. All right, now, we've upgraded our facility here, so I'm not using these butane burners. We actually went and got these beautiful induction burners because I feel like doing these a lot, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun if I can control some of this heat a little bit better. So, on the right-hand side, pasta water, because obviously we're making pasta. I'm gonna make sure it's boiling, all right? This pan here, we're gonna to use to make the pomodoro sauce. So, pomodoro sauce, you guys saw in the recipe. I did garlic, right? A little bit of olive oil, tomato cans, and that's it. So literally, take your knife, barring Chef Blake's knife. Shout out to Chef Blake, he's downstairs. Nice chopped, nice slice of the garlic. All right. All right, so you have your garlic ready. We're gonna take some olive oil. We're gonna turn this bad boy on. Full heat, get some olive oil in there. All right, so as your olive oil is heating up, get your canned tomato ready. So this is the best one they had over at uh, Sprouts, so I decided to get this. Normally we'll use a San Marzano peeled tomato. We're using this today. This is an Italian style or San Marzano style, but it's not really a San Marzano. Open that guy up. Plus I liked it because of the top. The top was fantastic. Makes my life a lot easier. All right, leave this, set this aside. Now let's see how quick this heats up. I'm gonna go ahead and get my garlic in there. And we're looking for a light toast on this, okay? Do not over toast your garlic. You're gonna end up with very, very bitter garlic and that's not what we're looking for. So this is heating up pretty quick, which is nice. All right, so we wanna toast this up. I'm gonna put a couple basil leaves in here. It already smells fantastic. That olive oil. All right, so this these pans work fantastic. I love this thing. So it's already doing its thing. It's already starting to toast. All right, so I'd let this go for another second or two. Turn the heat down a little bit. Now, whenever you're doing, whenever you're adding tomatoes, same way we would do anything chicken or anything. If you saw Amelia right now, she's wearing a beautiful white shirt. The last thing I wanna do is splatter all this all over her. So oil to the bottom, tomato on the top part, off the heat. If I put this on the heat right now, all that all that flame and everything would just splatter up and end up all over Amelia. It's not what we're trying to do. We like Amelia. All right, that's in here. Start off with a small pinch of salt because we season it every step, all right? And they're basically gonna turn this guy down now. I'm gonna put this on about a medium. So this goes up to 15, so I'm gonna put it on eight. I feel like that's gonna be the medium size of this. All right, now, pomodoro's going, pasta water's getting hot, the pasta's resting. How do you time your garlic toasting? So it's not really a timing, it's, I mean, I've, guys, I've been doing this for uh, 24 years now, and it's just, you're looking for, an, first things first is the aroma coming off the oil. I know right away if it's, if, it's, uh, if I'm ready to, to utilize and throw the tomatoes in it. Two is just looking at the color, right? If it's starting to become a little translucent, maybe has a you know a touch of some brown on it, that means you're ready to go and get, get the liquid in there. You don't want to burn your garlic. Last thing you could do right now, and the worst thing you could do is burn your garlic. So let's move over. So now we're gonna make the sausage ragu. So as this is going, we're gonna prep everything, okay? So first things first, we're gonna do a celery stalk. One stalk is celery, right? Cut the crappy ends off. You can compost this or throw this in your stock. All right, get your carrot and take a little bit off this. I already peeled it, peeled it before. All right, so now, using a microplane, or if you have very good knife skills, you start to grate this. Because basically what I'm trying to do is I want all the flavor of the carrot in there, but I don't want the big chunks of carrot in there, right? So that's how you get all that beautiful carrot flavor. Now, what does carrot do? Carrot adds sweetness, right? Because this is basically a big sugar bomb. 
So basically, you're just sitting here trying to add some sweetness to this beautiful sausage ragu that we're gonna make. And, and it's gonna be complex, because you know we could easily have just done a little sausage with some tomato sauce and called it a day, but we're gonna enhance it a little bit. We're gonna add you know some kale to it, a little bit of nutmeg, we're gonna add some ricotta on top. We're gonna really build this sauce together. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, a little bit more. And that's good on the, on the carrot. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the celery. So we'll probably end up using probably that much. Same exact thing. Take your celery and grate the celery. So this is a, a technique I learned when I was working in New York City actually for Mario Batali. So he, uh, this is how he would make his marinara sauce. I despise that word because I don't like putting this stuff in my uh, tomato sauce in general. I like utilizing it when you're making ragus or a nice braise, I'll use this, but I'm not a fan of using this in just straight up tomato sauce. As you can see, my tomato sauce is strictly garlic, a little bit of basil, uh, maybe a little bit of chili flake if you want to, but it's super simple. So this is going ripping a lot faster than I want to because again, we just first time we bought these things, so we're gonna test it, so I'm gonna turn it down. All right, now we have our celery and our carrot. We're gonna put that in a container and set it aside. All right, clean up a little bit. Stay clean when you work. All right, then shallots. If you guys watched the last time, you'll learn the, the shallot technique real quick. So directly in half because we want to start with a with a smooth surface. All right, and I got another little baby one here because these two are kind of small. So the way I do my shallots, all right, start this way first. Basically, I want the part with the uh, with the stem still on it, kind of on the back end, and then the front end is the part that's open. So what I do is I start and I pull down, but I don't go all the way to the end. And the last thing I wanna do is cut directly through this. So I kind of start with this here and then I push down right towards the middle, all right? Now you start, You now you turn it. So you started this way, now you turn it. Get your knife in there, I use the bottom half and I do one slice and I don't go all the way through, all right? So now you end up with this. You can see it's got some teeth going in there and almost like a blooming onion without being a blooming onion. And then you take your knife and we slice, we don't chop, because the last thing you want to do is start crying when we're making this, because there's no crying in pasta making, right? Amelia thinks that's funny every time I say it, so it's fantastic. That's why I keep saying it. We need a wine break. We do need a wine break. We're going to take one in two seconds. Don't you, don't you worry. All right. Get that off. Put this aside. We're going to finish up these shallots. Get the shallots in there. What's that? The kale looks really good. Kale does look good. All right, get the shallots in there. Do the same thing with this guy. So once you get that down, you could obviously go a little bit quicker with it. The good thing about making this one together is that there's so many steps, right? So, so if you're getting if you're getting uh, left behind a little bit right now, you can take a couple extra seconds and just keep going. All right. Same thing. Push it down. If I go and chop this right now, all that nasty oil from the shallot's gonna come out and it's gonna make me cry, and I don't like to cry. I'll leave the emotions at the door. All right. Same thing, right in here. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing with the last two little guys here, all right? Same exact thing. your shallots we're gonna take these out of here check our tomatoes all right because you don't want them to go crazy so now as you can see like your tomatoes are boiling right they're starting to break up a little bit now give it a little hand right start breaking these tomatoes up a touch a little bit just like that all right we're gonna come back to that we're gonna we're gonna keep breaking it up in a second but for now just keep doing that all right come back over let's finish these shallots All right, 
Now, like you said before, wine break for sure. Cheers. All right. All right, now let's get that microplane back using a garlic clove. We're gonna do the same exact thing we did with the carrots and the celery. All right, so there's one. We're gonna do one more clove here. Just like that. All right, set that aside. Now, you're basically done with this microplane. Unless you only have one microplane, I have another one here for later for the nutmeg. But I'm done with this one for now. So again, like we said earlier, clean up as you go, okay? Give your board a wipe. Now we're gonna start prepping the rest of this stuff, okay? So we're done with our garlic. We're done with everything and all we have left is exactly what we're using, okay? Let's go to the kale. So we have this beautiful kale. This is called Lacinato kale. This is Tuscan black kale. It's my favorite kale ever. All right, I'm not a big fan of those, what they call dinosaur kale. They're disgusting. You normally use those, the garnish crap that you have on your, for dinner parties, and we don't do that, all right? So Lacinato kale, the way I do it, I start pulling the stem out, and once I get to a point, I actually use the stem and then pull, all right? So you get rid of the stem, keep the leaves, okay? Same exact thing, we're gonna keep doing this. Remove the stem, pull, leave the stem, leave the leaves there and pull the stem out. All right? We're gonna do that with all of this because I like kale in this pasta dish a lot. Same exact thing. It's like deboning a chicken. Yeah, like deboning a chicken, I like that, it's good. All right, keep going. Because we're gonna blanch this in a second, guys, and when I go to blanch this, there's not gonna be much left, all right? And by blanching, it means cooking something in salted water and then shocking it in ice water, okay? That's probably enough. No, I said all of it, that's probably enough. The rest of this, tomorrow, keep it, chop it up, make a salad with it, all right? Now, the stems, I don't like to throw these out, okay? Normally what we'll do with these is we'll blanch them as well and throw them in here, but for today, just because we're, we have a little bit of uh, less time, um, the other thing is you just compost it, all right? So we do a little bit of composting at the restaurant, so we just compost it, all right? Now, that's ready, ready to be prepped. This is prepped. I have my sausage, we're gonna get this prepped now, okay? So sausage, throw a glove on because you don't wanna keep washing your hands in between. If you don't have gloves, then obviously wash your hands in between. All right, get this guy going, check your tomatoes again. Make sure if your tomatoes seem to be sticking at the bottom, do not scrape at it, just change your pans, okay? Because if you go to scrape at it and you get all that burnt, uh, tomato flavor on the bottom, you just ruin the entire dish, all right? And then you definitely should be crying, all right? Someone said kale is hipster lettuce. It is hipster lettuce, definitely. All right, get your sausage. So we got sweet Italian sausage today. So these are a little bit bigger than we would normally use. So we're only gonna use two. Normally they're about yay big. So we use, we use three to four of them. We're only gonna use two on this one. So, take your knife, find where the skin comes up right here, slice down, right? Because we want to take the casing off and then pull the casing off. Just like that, okay? Set that aside. Do the same exact thing with the other one. Start here, pull down. Get the skin off whenever I can freaking find it. Okay. And then same exact thing, you're gonna pull down on it, right? Just like that. So now you have your sausage there. So now that's prepped. Get your gloves off, because you don't want that ruining it. Now, because this isn't ready yet, we're gonna move, we're gonna jump here for a second. We're gonna kick this heat up. I just brought that to 15. We're gonna blanch our kale, so we're ready on that. All right? What we're gonna do is we need to season it, right? We need to salt our water. This is exactly the same water we're gonna use to cook our pasta. So it's got the same mentality. It's gotta be seasoned like the sea, okay? That's how you salt your pasta water. The thing is, is I don't know where you guys shop, but where I shop, this shit don't come seasoned, all right? We gotta season every single part of it. So this, we added a little bit of salt. We're gonna stop for a second. Now we're gonna hit this, right? We're gonna blanch our kid. Podcast plug. What's that? Podcast plug. Podcast plug, guys. I don't know if you guys, um, since we, we've, we've been blowing it up a lot, so if you've been living under a rock, 
you wouldn't know about the podcast, but Salt Your Pasta Water podcast, the first episode just launched on Wednesday. Uh, my cousin, Chef de Cuisine of White Bull, and Anthony Panzica uh, became a very good family friend now. He's the GM of White Bull. They were on it. Some very, very interesting stories from uh, some of our childhoods. I would definitely check it out. Uh, you can go to the Instagram page. It's Salt Your Pasta Water podcast. And then just click the link and just listen. It's fantastic. A lot of swearing, so don't watch around your kids because I'm not going to change the way I am on anything that we do. So the way I swear I am in public is the way I'm going to be. Anyway, if I come to your table, I'm probably dropping the F-bomb and I apologize <laughs> now, but I probably am. All right, seasoning our pasta water. Get some salt in there, right? We're going to give that a taste in a second to see where we're at. Give it a little twirl. Give the pasta water a little taste. A little bit more. And we're good. All right. So tomato sauce is going. We're going to taste that. Where are we on the tomato sauce? Do we need to add a little bit more salt? Let's taste it. Yes, needs more salt. All right, so now these tomatoes are really starting to get mushy, right? Because it's basically been cooking for a little bit now. So now continue to break it apart, okay? I don't need this to be a perfect, smooth consistency. I actually would rather not because the pasta itself is gonna be slightly on the mushy side. It looks like your sauce is gonna be mushy. Everything else in this is gonna be mushy, so I wanna add some texture somewhere, okay? So now, as this is going, we're gonna use the same water that we're gonna cook our pasta in, right? We are gonna add our kale right into this basket. We're gonna use these beautiful tongs and then just stick it down in there, right? So basically guys, for this, we want this to be cooked, all right? I like my kale when it's cooked on a little bit of, on the al dente side. Al dente, let's talk about al dente, okay? Because I think this is uh, one of those things that really aggravates me a little bit when it comes to cooking. All right, pasta. When you eat pasta, you gotta eat it al dente, all right? If I go and cook this to oblivion, right? It's basically going to be like you're eating soup, but what the hell is the point, all right? You want our pasta to have texture. The whole point of it is to have texture. I know some people might even want their pasta a little bit overcooked, like my father. Shame on him. But for everyone else, guys, please give it a shot. Unless you have some bad teeth, then you should probably want me to, to blend it anyway. But you want this to be al dente. It's super, super important. Okay, and plus, as much as you don't believe so, it's a lot easier to digest al dente pasta than it is to digest mushy pasta because you basically cooked it to gum and that's not what you're looking for, right? How hot would you set a standard home stove to? Home stove, guys, high. I, I go on high for my pasta water. I go on medium heat for the sauce. We're gonna start ripping on hot for super high when we make our sausage ragu. But I always always start with high. I mean, I'm, I cook at home the way I cook in restaurants, right? High heat all the time, get your pan hot, get everything else going at the same time. Now. I have my bowl of ice water here, which a lot of the ice is melting, I apologize, but it's still cold. So now I'm gonna take this kale that we just blanched, all right? And I'm gonna go right into this ice water with it because I'm shocking it, all right? Now, the reason for this is because I wanna keep that kale green or keep it that slight, is this green? I'm colorblind. It's yes. green, okay. it's green. I wanna keep it green, okay? <laughs> It was, I guess it was slightly black before. Hi, Emma. Um, so I wanna keep it green. So that's the thing, right? When you shock something, you're keeping all of that color beautiful in there. And that's what we're looking for. All right, so now that's staying there because we're gonna cook our pasta in there. We're gonna turn this down to a simmer because we don't need that for a little bit. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna finish this kale off, okay? Get yourself another container. This is my favorite part of kale when you blanch any kind of vegetables, to be honest with you, is you wanna start with a nice ball and then squeeze all of this water out, okay? You don't want that water. If you add this water into your sauce, your sauce is gonna taste just like kale and it's not gonna taste have any sausage flavor at all. So get all that water out, all right? Put that on your cutting board. And then super simple. Now it's got a ball here, flatten it out a little bit so it's easier to work with, and just give it a chop. 
just like this. Now, you don't like kale? Don't put it in there. You like spinach? Let's use spinach. You like Swiss chard? We use Swiss chard. You don't want to put sausage in this dish? You don't have to put sausage in this dish. This is just how I do it. You could easily have just done this with no sausage and just do a kale ragu. I'm fine with that. Get that into its own container. Put that right there. All right. As now, we're set. Clean up our board. Okay. Wine, Wine break. break, for sure. <laughs> Wine break, salute. All right. Let's take a look at this tomato one more time. Give it a little twirl, see where we're at. All right, taste. Awesome. All right, that's done. We're gonna take this nice towel here, put it down so we don't burn these tables. Put that down there. That's gonna sit, it's gonna wait a little bit, all right? All right, get another saute pan. Okay, put it down, kick the heat up to high, and we're going to start with a little bit of oil. So if you guys need me to slow down, let me know. I don't want to get too far ahead. All right, a little bit of oil in the pan. So this is the way we're going to do this ragu. It's going to be done in stages a little bit, okay, and you'll see in a second. Because after we're done doing this, we're going to make the pasta together. After we're done making the pasta, we're going to cook it and everything's going to be assembled. It's going to be amazing, all right? So, oil in the pan. Start off, add your sausage in here. Start helping it, break it apart a little bit because we're gonna break this all apart with our uh, spoon in a second. So start helping it break apart. Vinch Creek Farm says, love you, brother. I love you, Cass. Hope you're feeling better, my man. All right, get all that sausage in here. I like, I want to have a lot of meat in this dish because I like that ragu texture when there's a decent amount of meat in there. All right. So we're looking, we're looking to make sure we get a little bit of color on this, okay? Let that go for a sec. Constantly cleaning, constantly cleaning. Perfect time for another wine break, why not? You know? Why not? <laughs> Cheers, right? Why not? Alright. Now, I can already see it working, alright? Get your spoon underneath there, you can see some coloring happen. So now you start breaking the sausage apart. Alright? Don't be afraid to use the back of the spoon. Start pulling on it just like that. I'm looking to get this sausage cooked, but I don't want these huge chunks, right? If there's a couple chunks in there, it's not a big deal. But these really, really big chunks is not what we're looking for, right? Bree Miller says, shout out, thanks for doing these. Love it, learn something new each week, especially when I can't go to Grana every day. Thank you, Bree. Appreciate it. We're going to do it every week, I hope. All right. Keep going, keep going. Pulling at it just like that. And you can see it's almost cooked already. All right, I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, and if you guys paid attention to the last couple of times we did this, see all this on the bottom? You want that, all right? This is where all the flavor is. This is how I'm gonna build that beautiful flavor in this ragu, okay? So keep beating at this like that. Couple more times like that. All right, take it off. Keep all that fat in there, so you're gonna want to skim this. Get all that sausage out. Cass says he's never seen that done with a spoon. What do you normally use, Cass? All right, back on. 
Now, as we add that back on, you're gonna need a touch more oil, not a ton. So you got that beautiful fat from the pork in there, add a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. And now we add the carrot, the onion, sorry, the carrot, the celery, the shallot, and the garlic. That goes in there, okay? So this right here, normally done with onion, I just really like the, the sweetness from the shallot, that's why I'm adding in here. But this right here, this mixture in Italian, that's called sofrito, okay? So sofrito is basically the staple to any type of sauces, ragus, anything like that in the Italian language, all right? Um, we normally use this uh, when we make pasta fagioli. We use this when we make, you know, on, in bigger chunks in stock. So the whole point of this now is you're gonna cook this down almost to a caramelization, right? And as we're cooking it, if you look right here, Look how nice that comes up. All those chunks right there, that's where all the flavor is. That's the amazing part right there. All right, so I got, I'm gonna jack this guy up on high because I wanna start getting a little bit of caramelization on here. Then I may lower it later. All right, as that's going, anytime we caramelize something, we add a little bit of salt. We're trying to draw all that water out and we wanna caramelize this a touch, okay? So if I didn't add salt, it would take a little bit longer for all that liquid to come out. So I'll start scraping the bottom. See how I'm scraping the bottom of this right now? So we get all that flavor out of there, right? Plus, after we're gonna deglaze this with the wine that we're drinking, right? If you wouldn't drink that wine, don't use it to cook with, okay? Because the whole point is you get to drink it as you're cooking. That's the best part. Don't buy cheap wine to cook with. Don't buy cheap wine to drink. Please, spend a little extra on the wine. It's delicious. Where do you buy this one? So this guy, we sell it here. I don't think you can, you could probably get this at Perrine's or at Vinoteca. Probably have to go somewhere where, you know, there's a little bit more knowledge about wine. Uh, maybe Murphy's may have this, uh, but like your Trader Joe's man like that probably is not gonna have that. This smells delicious. It sure does. And, and, and I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't really lie, unless like I absolutely have to. Um, this absolutely does smell delicious. All right. No Carlo Rossi. No Carlo Rossi, who said that? Um, That's fantastic. No, no Carlo Rossi, please. Uh, New Canaan, Connecticut, Lemon. What's up guys? Those are my old partners from a restaurant today, and Robbie Cooper and Billy Guyana from Facebook. What's the name of the wine again? Can you? Falangina. Absolutely amazing. Dina, we had this at Bartugo. So good. All right. Keep going. Move this around. We're going to cook this just a little bit more. Right, all that right there, that's what we're looking for. All right, cook this a little bit more. And you can see it already starting to caramelize. It's already changed color. You, you could smell the you can smell the shallots toasting. You can smell the sweetness in the carrots. The garlic's doing its thing. This is really looking good now. All right, now, before we use up all this wine and I end up with none left, <sighs> pour myself another glass. I'm gonna end up probably having to share these with these ladies here, so. Here we go. Always off the heat, guys. The last thing you want to do is burn yourself. The last thing you want to do is catch this thing on fire. So off the heat, add some wine. All right, back on the heat. Now it really smells good. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, take your spoon and start scraping the bottom of the pan. All these bits here, you can see it right there in the, in the, in the uh, video. All that, you want that all in your sauce, all right? Really start to scrape the bottom. That's where all the flavor is right there. All right, so if any of you guys have watched this before, you see what I like to do when anytime I use any kind of alcohol in my cooking, I like to reduce it almost so dry, okay? I want the sweetness in it, I don't want it to taste like wine, okay? All right, that's gonna start going. Kick that up a little bit. This guy will kick up a little bit. Sausage here. Move everything to this side because we're gonna finish this off and then we're gonna start rolling some pasta. All right. So for anybody that has been talking shit about our classes selling out and you didn't watch this, shame on you, okay? This is a free one that we normally charge a hundred bucks for. So enjoy, all right? 
All right, we're gonna cook this down a little bit more. It's already getting dry, as you can see. And we're gonna get all that, scrape that all up, right? Don't forget those pieces. That's where all the flavor is. Scrape it up nice, there you go. It's crazy to get super excited about scraping the bits off the bottom of the pan, but I do. It's so good. All right. Wine break, right? Why not? I Cheers. Going for the original grapes this week. He knows it. All right. A little bit more. Almost there, guys. Right? You see? You still see the liquid in there? I don't want that. I want to. I want to reduce it almost to complete caramel, right? Because the more I cook that down, natural sugars that are inside the wine are going to create its own little caramel. Mix that in with the garlic, all that stuff. You can only imagine how good this is. All right. So the good thing about this, guys, again, is because we haven't even made the pasta yet, okay? Pasta part doesn't take long because, well, it may not take long for me because I've done it so much, but it's gonna be relatively on the quicker side. So we're gonna get this all done and then spend some time making some pasta and then assemble this, it's gonna take two minutes, all right? So that's, that's reduced. There's nothing in that pan anymore, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add chicken stock, okay? And don't be afraid, I add quite a bit. Two reasons, one, normally I wouldn't do this, right? I'm doing it because we're on camera right now and 99% of the time if we were in a restaurant, this sauce is already built, I dropped the pasta and we're ready. We're gonna save us a little bit of time right now because while this is reducing, we're gonna start making pasta, all right? And then we can pull it all together right at the end because we don't need to mess with that right now. Now, turn this guy on high, let it come up to a boil, and then we'll reduce it a little bit over time. And then we'll also um, allow us again to gain some time doing this. Am I grabbing that pasta for me? All right, I'm gonna do the pasta right on the table because I think that's gonna be easier. All right, all right, let's roll some pasta, okay? So let's start with this dough that we made. Already super nice to use, you could just tell. All right, so, so I don't spill the wine, another wine break. All right, beautiful pasta dough, push it, it comes back, cut it in half, cut that in half, cut that in half. Okay, start with that. Set these aside. So you're gonna start with one piece here, just like this, okay? Center your table. You can put a small dusting of flour, you don't need a lot, just enough to like make sure it doesn't stick. Using one hand, start to roll it. Okay, you can see it's already starting to turn into a cylinder. Now, a little touch more flour down. All right, so you got your little log here. Now, starting in the center, apply even pressure going all the way to the outside of the table, all right? All right, you end up with a log like this. Start cutting pieces off that look like that, okay? Now. Couple ways you could do this. Option one, take it, give it a little twirl like that. So you start with a piece looking like this. Take two fingers, pull very hard against the table, and you make your cavatelli or your rasciatelli that way. So rasciatelli means to scrape, okay? So we're scraping it across the table. So we're gonna do the same thing again. Cut a little piece off, a little twirl in your hand. So you end up with a piece that looks like this, okay? Start there, two fingers, just like this, and pull hard. Do not feel like you're you're gonna rip it. Trust me, you won't, okay? And if you do, good for you. You're very strong and probably want you to work pasta for us anyway, okay? Again, cut a little chunk off. Found an Italian deck of cards. There you go. All right, pull. Just like that. So if you guys read in the notes there, you see Finch Creek Farm, my man Farmer Cass said he found an Italian deck of cards. So 
the Italian deck of cards. Let's chat about that. So, we announced our new restaurant opening uh, about a week, week and a half ago, two weeks ago, called Bastone. Bastone is the clubs, or the ace of clubs in the Italian card deck. It was my grandfather's favorite card, and every time he had it, he got really excited, he slammed it down on the table. So, that's what we're naming our restaurant, okay? Bastone is gonna be a mozzarella bar, it's gonna be a very cool vibe, and it's gonna have very, very cool pasta there, um, and we're really excited about it. So. We need to make more than four, but for now I'm gonna show you that, okay? I mean, I like watching you like the free class. So, hey chef, missing your food man, can't wait to visit again soon. Let's plan a trip. Bill, my man, I can't wait for you to come down, bro. It was a big surprise when I saw you at White Bull a couple years ago. All right, same thing guys, pull across, just like that. So now, if you're working at the restaurant and we're sitting here and you're my pasta guy, 65 of these to one order. All right? So when you come in and you're paying 18 bucks for a dish of pasta, you know why you're paying that much. Okay? This is not easy. Take some hard work to do this. But it's worth it. All right? This pasta is delicious. Pull it straight across. So again, guys, I've been making pasta for a very long time. So I'm obviously going to make these a little bit faster than you are. If you need me to show you again, just say, hey, chef, show me again. Pull across. So it's just like Cavatelli, really not much different. So what I did though, is I brought a Cavatelli board with me. So if you had a Cavatelli board like this, right? Or a gnocchi board, you could easily make this into a Cavatelli just by using your thumb and swirling down. And here's your Cavatelli. All right. So if you have one of these boards, bust it out. Let's start using that if you want. It's up to you. But the cool thing about this guys is this pasta here, this, this dough can make so much, okay? Like, one of my favorite pastas in the world to make. You take this, you pull really hard against the table, right? Flip it over, get a little bit of flour on your thumb, invert, and we have orecchietti, okay? Super simple to make, um, very not, really not difficult at all. Seems difficult, but again, 40 of those to an order. So enjoy making that. <laughs> Are you using semolina or AP flour to keep it from not sticking? I'm together? using AP flour to keep it from not sticking. You can use semolina. I just, uh, mm -hmm. AP flour is closer than the semolina. I'm upstairs, all right? William said the boys from Connecticut are coming down soon. Please do, guys. I miss you guys a lot. Please come down. I'll actually be up in a few weeks. So maybe we get together for a drink. Falangina. I'll bring the wine. All right, pull across like that. So obviously we've made none, so we're gonna speed this process up a little bit and I'm gonna really get to work here. So, cut, cut. So I'll pre-cut a bunch of these like that. Cut this guy in half. As that's going, we're checking out. Let's check our sauce here, right? I think we uh, got unplugged. Yeah, I think we got unplugged somewhere. Please. Thank you, ma'am. Because if not, I. Uh, Kind of screwed here, man. We're gonna have to migrate down to the kitchen. Yeah, all right. Pull across like that, we'll keep going. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. It's probably why I don't like to use electric to begin with. All right, keep going on this guy. 
So again, really not a difficult pasta to make. These aren't one of those difficult ones that's not gonna be, it's gonna be impossible at home. I mean, the other way, guys, is you could easily just do this, use the back of your knife this way, pull across like that, you end up making the same thing, cavatelli or rachatelli. Meg says, what music do you like to listen to when you make pasta? All right, so, is this my wife that's asking me this? Okay, honey, you know what kind of music I like? I only listen to Andrea Bocelli, Cher, or Celine Dion, Celine Dion while I make my pasta. Don't know why. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll tell you why. I mean, it's easy. So when I was working at uh, my restaurant in uh, Connecticut, not the one I owned, but the one of the first restaurants I worked at was called Bella Luna. We, for some reason, loved listening to Cher as the restaurant was open. Um, so we, we listened to a ton of it. And then what I did was I, we ended up having, a, we put some speakers downstairs in the basement. Mm -hmm. And when I would work down there and make pasta for the restaurant, that's all I would listen to is share. Then I guess as years went on, I started incorporating a little bit of Celine Dion, because that's my girl, right? And then after that, I, I absolutely love Andrea Bocelli, so I would uh, I would listen to him a lot too. Um, I, I, I'm, if, for everybody that knows me, very comfortable with my sexuality, but if Andrea Bocelli walked in the door, he'd probably get a kiss on the lips. Right? I love <laughs> me some Andrea Bocelli. Uh, the other person that would probably get that is uh, Massimo Bottura, the chef from Italy. He's another amazing human being. I also think that my wife said if there's ever anybody that she would leave me for, it would be Massimo Batura. So honey, sorry I just put you on blast, uh, but he's an amazing person that I don't blame you, all right? What's your favorite restaurant from your hometown area region? I have a ton of friends out here from the North Bridgeport. Um, so I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. The reason why I moved is because I hated all the restaurants over there. I think they were all pretty horrible and uh, my restaurant was the best, so I got out of there. Um, no, all kidding aside, I, I, my favorite restaurant in Stanford, Connecticut is Polici's. It has that real old school vibe that I love so much. Bless you. Thanks. Um, so that would probably be my favorite restaurant by far, it would be Polici's in Stanford. Um, Fairfield, I didn't really have a favorite restaurant. I mean, my favorite pizza place in Fairfield was Colony Grill by far. Um, Bridgeport didn't really have, really wasn't really a fan of anything up in Bridgeport. Um, Norwalk, I mean, other, it's not it popped. The breaker popped. No, can I get to walk back here? Yeah, dude. Is. What up, Rye? What up? That's Ryan. he's the general manager. There's Sam, she handles all your events. Samantha at granaatl.com Grana for all your events. Please give her a call. Yeah, give me a call. <laughs> call Let's Ryan for reservations. Uh, Bree says Valencia is her favorite. Valencia is fantastic. I actually really, really like Valencia a lot. Um, it is very interesting for me. That's why I think I like this so much. But yeah, I agree. Valencia is good. Valencia was actually down the road from the restaurant that I uh, that I own. That guy, he's leaving at 801. What are you talking about? Ryan. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, TMR imagery here, right? Uh, he takes a lot of our photos, so he's a he's a really good friend of mine, and he is pretty well known in Connecticut for photos. He's a really great photographer, and uh, we had him come down and do some photos of the restaurant last time he was here. So he got to meet the crew. So uh, very very interesting people that we have working out here. Thank you right down to your measurement in grams. Need to make my way home from Jersey. Please come down. And I love your last name, bro. Love your last name. We got to figure out if we're related. All right, keep pulling across, guys. Super simple, really not that difficult. We're having technical difficulties with the uh, with the burner, but it gives you guys some time to keep up, so it's not that bad, all right? Keep going on this, because guys, again, I've just been doing this for 15 minutes, and look how much we have, none, all right? <laughs> keep going with this, okay? So again, give it a little twist, pull across, twist, All right, keep going. Same thing, cut. Same thing, pull across. Sweating today, they got me working. All right, clean this up so we don't have any mess with it. All right, we're almost there, I promise.
What's your favorite pasta to make and which one's the hardest? Okay, favorite pasta to make uh, is probably gonna be, probably ought to get the, I re actually really enjoy making these. Uh, a couple reasons, one, it's super difficult and a lot of people aren't good at it. So when we put that on the menu, I think, um, people get really excited about it and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody actually just made all that pasta. Um, and when it comes to the hardest to make, um, probably a pasta called caramele or doppio. Um, kind of the same idea or technique is a lot of folds uh, and it gets a little challenging. You make it enough times, it's really not that difficult. It's like anything guys, you do it enough times and in repetition, you kind of got it down. You're really not gonna run into many issues. Um, but I mean, there, there's a bunch of color Jonas that uh, stuffed pasta from Sicily is relatively, it's basically impossible to make, um, but it's fun. We have a lot of, we have a lot of fun when we make it. Technical difficulties averted, hopefully for now. Um, but it's a fun pasta to make and people get really excited when we put it on the menu. So uh, it's, it almost has to be on all the time. So from this pasta here, actually a really cool pasta that I like to make a lot uh, and I'll make it in a second I'm gonna, after I cut these up. It's working. Thank you, brother. Uh, so the other pasta, like, hey, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, Ryan. Hey, hey. All right. The other pasta I like to make is a pasta called Lodiguitas. Okay, Lodiguitas is one of my favorites. So you start with this dough. You really get thin on it here. Don't be afraid to get it a little thinner, all right? What are your feelings about Bucatini? So I like bucatini, but um, bucatini is made two different ways, right? Either with an extruder or with a torchietto. And a torchietto is something that you attach to the table, you add the dough, and then you have to do it by hand and you're doing one of these motions. They're great. Um, they're more machine used, which I'm fine with. We use quite a bit of um, machinery here at Grana. At White Bull, it's more handmade pasta. At the new restaurant, Bastone, it's gonna be like 90% handmade pasta. Um, so I do like bucatini a lot. So when you start with this, right, you end up taking this dough, three fingers, one, two, three. And on the third one, you actually overlap and you stick, you basically use your fingers and you push down on this one pretty hard. And then it's basically a twirl. And then once you get to a certain point, you pull and that's a pasta lodiguitas. Insanely pain in the ass pasta to make. What fun, why not, you know? So one more time. Pull too hard and I'm sorry. Maybe I'll make a smaller one. Same idea though. Pull it across near there. Super simple to make, um, but you know, probably the most simple in my eyes because I made it a lot of times. So I'm sorry I keep using the word simple. It's usually literally using flour and water and then it's a couple twists and turns. Uh, but I can see how it could be difficult for a lot of other people. Um, let's finish this up as that's boiling. So let's look over actually at the sauce now that our technical difficulties are over. And we're gonna let this boil. I mean, you can see already that a lot of it has already been reduced. And we're gonna keep reducing that down. Already smells amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, we've run out of room on one plate. So we're gonna add a little bit more flour here. Like 18 people. Everybody always says I get excited and I get, I, I'm amazed when I see how many people come up because I mean, you just never know, right guys? I mean, like you don't know who's, who's gonna find this interesting. And you know, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, like I'm, I, I feel like I'm a very humble person. I'm, I consider myself a nobody in Atlanta and you know, we'll get there eventually when you know, our name will get bigger. But you know, I do get amazed when there's, when there's 18 to 20 people on here. What's up, Nick? What's up, what's up, Jeff? So Nick's one of our new managers here. And uh, we're happy he's here. He just started a, this week. So when you guys come into Grana, say hi to Nick. Dana Nick's on Facebook says, hey, Pat, when are you coming to Connecticut? Who's this? Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana. Cry. I can't see. <laughs> hey, Dana, I'm actually going to be up in a couple weeks. I'd love to see you. Um, I didn't reach out to uh, Trish yet. I know she had the baby, but I will. I'd love to see you guys. I'll be up actually in uh, middle of August. So I'd love to see you when I come up. Wine break. <laughs> Definitely a wine break. Anybody say it yet? Bree says that this is her time to, her wine time when she has a one year old. Oh, I love it. All right, wine break, let's do it. Cheers. 
All right. So it's still going, guys. Do you like to use the whole wheat flour when making pasta dough? I don't mind it. I don't mind whole wheat flour at all. I actually really, really love whole wheat flour. I like the texture it brings. I love the flavor. Um, at White Bull, we mill a lot of our own flour uh, and we use an actual ancient grain that's very similar to a farro there. Um, so sometimes a the pasta there may have a little bit of an off look to it in color. It's because of that reason. Um, but I actually really, really like whole wheat flour. Um, little bit of a inside scoop on whole wheat flour though, is whenever we make whole wheat flour, we use the same amount of regular flour. We just add some whole wheat flour for color. So they do the same shit at Barilla and DeCheco, wherever the hell else you buy your whole wheat. So don't think for a second it's more healthy because it's not. All right? Just a little inside scoop for you. All right, we are almost there. I mean, probably not gonna do all this pasta just because I don't feel like we need it. Maybe it's just too much power. Yeah, can you, um, can you unplug the wine fridge? Do you wanna go get Ryan? Yeah, just tell him, hey, just tell him to repop it. Sorry guys. First time with electric, this is what happens. What are you right. most excited about for when opening Bastard Night? So, for me, the, the fun part about it is gonna be, I, I, I enjoy building teams, right? I enjoy building restaurants, I enjoy building teams. Um, I, I just really like that aspect of it, bringing people together and really starting to like, you know, build this empire that I've always wanted to build. You know, I started in Connecticut and I sold it all to move down here. Um, but that's a fun part for me. And then on top of it, it's bringing that mozzarella bar aspect to Atlanta that's not here, right? So like I'm from Connecticut, so there are no mozzarella bars there either. But I feel like what Atlanta's missing is like true, really, really authentic Italian. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, a mozzarella bar that's based upon, you know, food from Campania. Maybe eventually we end up doing, you know, a, Sicily, a Sicilian restaurant based on, you know, the sea or a Sardinian restaurant based on pasta. I think doing these micro regions is gonna be the part that's gonna be fun for me when it comes to opening more Italian restaurants. Listen, my last name, my entire name is Pasqualino Pascarella. If you ever see me make a taco or open a taqueria, I apologize, okay? I'm gonna do what I do best I may consult in some of those because I know how to make tacos. I've studied it. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna do what I'm good at. And I'm good at pasta and I'm good at pizza. So I'm gonna stick to that. Um, so we're gonna end up doing more restaurants for sure. There may be a few more granas in the works or something like that. But we're definitely gonna have all Italian restaurants. And I feel like we kind of have to, you know? I mean, I wanna corner that market that I feel like is you know, yeah, there have been Italian restaurants here or there, and there's a couple guys that only own Italian restaurants, but I really want to take this to another level. Uh, all my wine lists are all going to be Italian. Actually, White Bull's in a transition right now, going to all Italian. Um, Rana has been all Italian, but Stone is going to be the biggest wine list so far, and that's going to be all Italian. Um, I want to be able to teach people, like, you know, what Italian food is like, you know, and and how to drink Italian wine, and why why I wouldn't serve a French white with something that we have here. I unplugged your wine fridge. Maybe that'll help. Oh, did you hit it? Flip the switch. I broke it. Busted again. There's Ryan again. Thank Alex you. with a big bottle. <laughs> what, is it, what, is it, what is it say? What are you going to say? Atlanta scene needs this new blood. It's going to be amazing. I agree, Bree. I think I think it does. I think. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I actually am really excited for the next, you know, five to 10 years in Atlanta. I feel a lot of these guys that have been, uh, since I've been here, that have been sous chefs or chef de cuisines in some of these bigger name restaurant groups are finally going out on their own and they're giving themselves a shot. Um, and I think that's the food that's gonna be fun. I mean, you know, you're getting a lot of people like, like the guys at Talat Market that are opening up, you know, these really cool, uh, this really cool restaurant that involves around the food that they grew up eating. I mean, that's fun. I mean, that's the stuff that I want to do. I want to open up restaurants uh, based upon like how I ate as a child or what I grew up knowing or what I grew up learning. That's what is, that's the most important part to me. So then turn this thing on. My God. Jay, you're right about this guy, Jay. Now, now, look, he's working OT, it's 8.05. <laughs>
<laughs> it. I hit OT That's on Tuesday. It. Come on, man. Hit the switch. I can't finish. <laughs> Hurry up. All right. A little bit more because we're obviously having technical. Oh, come on. That's why you don't use electric. All right, that's gonna keep going. We're gonna finish up this pasta. We're almost done, I promise. We're not, we're not gonna need to do it all. But again, guys, this, you just, you know, give it a little, turn into a little ball, wrap it back up, throw it back into your fridge, and you're good for tomorrow, right? Or the next day, or the day after that. That can last, because it's just flour and water, that can last for at least 10 days in the fridge. You don't gotta really worry about it. Sam, if you hear me screaming, Sam, that means it went off again. <laughs> the breaker, it keeps... Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye. Bye, Sam. All right, knife done. Finish this guy up. Good food takes time, and you just have to drink more wine. That's true. Who the, said that? The Is Italian it Brie, Brie? way. Brie? Yeah. Brie, I agree. Brie. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Glad you make the rest of time. You do make. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate it. I keep forgetting which camera to look at. <laughs> guys, you guys have to, if anybody here is on TikTok, you have to check out Grana ATL, Grana underscore ATL, White Bull underscore ATL. I may have a couple fun things on mine too. I think it's Chef Pat Pascarella, but you gotta check it out. We just started diving deep into it. It's a lot of fun. We're having a blast doing it. It's nice to do because it, it breaks up the, uh, the constant stress of the restaurant. We're having fun doing it. Plus you get to see the people behind the scenes. It's not always me, it's not always Chef Belly, it's not always Ryan. We're mixing everybody up so everybody can kind of get, you know, a little share in the spotlight, which I think would be fun. Um, but if you guys chimed in yesterday or today, you'll see some pretty fun ones at Grana. We'll have some new white bull ones soon. So this is going, we're gonna keep letting that go. We're gonna finish up this pasta because we're almost there. We have a little downtime here. We're almost done. Now's the time to either ask questions about this or questions about anything that you have questions on. Jay, you're probably not allowed to ask these questions right now because you're probably going to ask something that's inappropriate. Uh, my maiden name is Patrulli, small rock in Italiano. Don't let Miller fool you. I, I, you know what, Bree? Just from the way you were talking about food, I kind of had a feeling uh, you were Italian by far. All right, finishing that up. We're gonna cook up these guys too, because why the hell not, right? It's gonna make it even better. So, a good amount of dusting of flour. We'll move these guys over, and then we'll clean up, right guys? Because I'm really anal about cleanliness. Only here. Only here. Who said that, my wife? Me. Uh, damn, it's <laughs> fucked up. All right. So, we're gonna keep going, okay? So this is gonna start to reduce a little bit more. Now's the time, so that reduced by half. We're gonna add our sausage back in. All right. Sausage goes back in. Get all that good juice in there. After the sausage, your kale goes in. That kale is going to continue to cook down, so don't you worry. You think there's a lot of kale in there right now compared to sausage. You give it a sec and see what happens when that starts to cook down a lot. Um, TMRI imagery says, I was going to ask what you love to cook that is an Italian that may surprise people. What I like to cook? That is an Italian. That is an Italian. Oh man. Oh, I mean, I, it's not that I like to cook it, I'm just really good at it. It's still pasta, but I mean, I like to make mac and cheese. I really like to cook eggs a lot. Um, what else? Cheesecake, because mine's better than my wife's, but she won't admit it. Um, I think, what else? I mean, that is a good question though, Jay. What else do I like to cook? I mean, I like I, I like to eat different things. I really like to cook tacos a lot. Like, I really, really do enjoy tacos. 
Um, I like to make it just because about a couple years ago, I really dove in deep into Mexican cuisine um, because to be honest with you, before uh, Grana opened, I was considering uh, some sort of Mexican restaurant. Happy I didn't go down that route because I probably would have been laughed out of Atlanta because my last name doesn't end in Sylvia um, says Brazilian food. Brazil, Sylvia, I only eat yours, Sylvia. I can't do anything else. What is your chicken protein dish? What's your favorite chicken protein dish? I mean, so my favorite chicken protein dish by far is chicken scarpiello. That was my favorite ever. Um, it was one of the first dishes I ever learned how to make. Um, thighs, breast, whole chickens, whatever, it doesn't really matter, but it was absolutely amazing growing up learning how to make that dish. I would definitely say that's my favorite by far. All right, so now, as we're making this, you can see we're gonna have a lot, all right? We're gonna add all this together and you're gonna end up with quite a bit of pasta, quite a bit of sauce. We're gonna take some of it out when the time comes because you're gonna save that for the next day, um, especially if we're not cooking all this pasta. And then we're gonna tie this whole dish together, together and you'll see in a sec. So now's a good time again to give this a taste where we're at, right? Because we haven't really added much salt. Actually pretty close. Do you have says you're the only person he would come back and work in the restaurant for. Jeff, thank you, man. That means a lot, dude. Really, really does mean a lot. I appreciate that a lot. What else we got? I always consider mac and cheese southern, so not Italian. That's what I'm saying, though. I said I'm not, that's not, that's Italian <laughs> dish. That's something that is not Italian that I would make. You could do an Italian version. I can. Actually, my version is Italian. There's black truffles in it. Ooh. So, of course, I gotta do it. That's, it's gotta be bougie when I do it, so. I would like to try your tacos one day. My tacos are delicious, I promise. I bet they are. They are delicious. I we, love uh, tacos. We actually, every year for Memorial Day at White Bull, except for the past couple years because of COVID, uh, we turned White Bull into El Toro Blanco, and we did we did a taco pop-up, oh, and we would normally wow. start at like 11 and sell out by like three. Farmer Cash, shout out to you, my man. You ate like 12, or it was a 20 one year. Good for you, bro, that was amazing. I need would you to ever consider curing your own meats at Bastone and use them in dishes at your other restaurants? Yes, we do. The only problem with that, guys, I don't know if you guys know about the laws down here in Atlanta or just across the country, you need something called a HACCP plan. So a HACCP plan is basically a plan that you need to develop. It went down again. Okay, we're Please, don't tell Sam to just live by the breaker. Um, so, oh, there you go, it went back on. False alarm. Maybe. All right, so um, has a plan. You basically have to design this plan, work with somebody to do it and build it together. And basically what you do is you talk about cooling temperatures, temperatures of storage, how much salt content, everything. It takes about eight months to a year to develop or to, to write. And then it has to be reviewed by a health inspector. Um, to me, I'd rather buy it for now, but over time, yes. Once we, once this restaurant group gets bigger and we own some sort of commissary kitchen where we're able to create a lot and really do more in one area, then I would definitely, without a doubt, consider uh, doing our own charcuterie. Uh, chef Elliot, the chef here at Grana, if you can see him through the window, that beautiful man down there with the mane on his head, um, he is very good at charcuterie and we would basically work together and do it together. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for eventually incorporating that for sure, without a doubt. All right, now. Bree says, have you watched the series with Stanley Tucci on Searching Absolutely, Italy? it's one of my favorite shows on television by far. It's, it's absolutely amazing, I love it. All right, we're gonna add the Pomodoro. We're gonna save this because we're actually gonna transfer this back into there. We're gonna cook this for a second and then throw whatever we're not using in there. So we're gonna reuse that. All right, give that a little toss. So guys, again, this is more than enough. If you cooked, if you made all this pasta here, probably would have been perfect amount, but because we're not using it all, yeah, it keeps, it keeps popping. I literally heard it as I was walking uh, awesome. by, so I redid it. So keep, keep, a, keep an eye for me, please. Thank you, Sam. All right, we're gonna give that a little more of a twirl here. All right, now we're gonna bring this guy up to a boil, give it a taste, take some of it out, and then finish this just up, all right? God, that looks so good. You could even eat it like this and not even have to add the pasta. It's up to you. Make yourself a nice little Italian uh, chili. Stew. Stew. So good. Oh my God. 
All right, a little more salt. Remember, you could always add, you can't take out. All right, now, we're gonna take some of this out because we don't need all this, right? So again, you can use this tomorrow, however you want it. Put this over some rice, maybe. Maybe a little bit of polenta, maybe some quinoa. I'm on this quinoa oh, kick right now. My wife can't keep enough of it in the house. I'm trying to get svelte for you guys, so I'll look better on camera. <laughs> Touch more. All right, that's perfect. So now you got enough for tomorrow. All right, now we're gonna transfer these pots. You don't have to do this at home. I want to. It's gonna be easier for me to flip and toss. I will never burn you, Sydney. No. Ever. <laughs> All right. Your phone looks, That's right. Sauce looks good. One more taste. See where we're at. Perilla. Miss Ritter says, you're perfect just the way you are. Who said that? Miss Ritter, thank you, Dina. I appreciate it. I don't get those really nice comments from your husband, but thank you. All right, we're going to break these apart a little bit because I stacked on top. You can make shrimp and grits with that, says someone. Yeah, you can. That actually be really good with shrimp and grits. All right. Who the hell is banging? Probably Ryan being a jerk. <laughs> All right, we're gonna drop the pasta in. Isabel says she's your biggest fan. Where is she? <laughs> Hi, Isabel. All right, get all this pasta in here. Jay says, heat swipe right, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir, I appreciate it. All right, we're gonna clean this up so we don't make a mess. All right, guys, now it's time to bring this whole dish together, right? Which is the funnest part of cooking, okay. So, pasta is cooking. We're gonna give that a little twirl in the basket. Make sure it doesn't get stuck. Who said what? Ryan said, who is that guy grabbing wine? What a gem. <laughs> get back to work, bro. Get back to work. All right. All right, guys, so now that's working. So what, what time is it? We know what time it is, right? Wine time. Wine break, why not? Bro, I'd swipe for eight to say, Jesus Christ, it's fantastic. <laughs> I'm happy Chef Ellie hasn't chimed in today. <laughs> Wowie Pat looks amazing. Thank you, guys. All right, a little bit longer in here. We're going to wait that, for that guy to come up to the top. Then we're going to finish this dish. I'm telling you, it is awesome. It looks amazing. And it's still reducing, which is going to make it even better. If we have to add a little bit more, we will. Break up your sausage a little bit more. So now think of the flavors in here, right? Tomato, chicken stock, wine, kale, garlic, shallots, carrots, celery. There's a lot happening. Um, and then on top of it, we're gonna add some ricotta on top. We're gonna add a little bit of nutmeg. We're really gonna bring this to another level in a second. You'll see. Who do you think makes the second best pizza in Atlanta after you? I, li I really, really, really like Bruni Napoli. I think Bruni Napoli makes a really good pizza. They're right down the street from us here at Grana. Um, I'd say that our pizzas are very similar in flavor and in texture. I think our pizzas are two of the most, um, the, the pizzas that resemble Neapolitan pizzas the most by far. Uh, it's, it's softer of a dough like it's supposed to be. You know, if you go into a pizzeria and the pizza's got a crisp to it and you're in a Neapolitan restaurant, you're not in a Neapolitan pizzeria. Neapolitan pizza is supposed to have no crisp at all. It's supposed to be doughy and it's supposed to be eaten with a fork and knife. All right? All right, almost there. So if you see what I did here, I took a little bit of this pasta water and I added in there. Two reasons. One, more salt because they needed a little bit more. Two, the starch from here is gonna thicken this up. All right? Have you had one Fornello? I do. I think one maybe, maybe I have a not. restaurant. No, I have not had it. All right. Pasta, get more of that in there. Get all that pasta in there. Look how good that looks. We have all these different shapes, which is gonna make it even better. And then just give it a little twirl, just like this. All right, just like that. We're gonna add the smallest amount more of the sauce and one more tablespoon of the 
but mostly kale because I want more kale in there, right? What are your thoughts on New Haven Pizza? All right, let's talk New Haven Pizza. Who asked that question? See, all right, Jay. I love New Haven Pizza, right? Uh, I think New Haven Pizza is fantastic. I think Sally's is light years ahead of Pepe's. I think Pepe's to me is just not the style of pizza I want. It's always burnt in my opinion. Um, but Sally's to me is where it's at. Sally's has a light, slightly less char cooked at a lower temperature. And to me it's crispier, which I like when it comes to that style of pizza. Um, so funny thing is, is that when you look at their style of pizza there, they, they say that they're a Neapolitan pizzeria. I don't agree. So if you look at their pizza and compare it to any pizzas in Italy, they're actually more closer to a Roman pasta, I mean a Roman pizza. So I think that they need to go back and kind of take a look at if they know where they're coming from type thing. But to me, it's more of a Roman style pizza where it's a little bit crispier, charred on the outside. That's Rome. Naples is a doughy dough. It's a doughy crust. It's meant to be thicker on the outside. All right. This looks good. We're going to give this a taste before we finish it, all right? All right. All right. That's reduced as much as I want it to be. I'm going to turn this guy off. So look, there's no sauce on the bottom. That's when you know this thing is reduced enough. Now let's finish this, all right? Olive oil. A little bit on top. This is going to give this a nice earthiness to it, but it's also going to give the pasta a shine. You can already see how shiny the pasta is there compared to how dull it is here, okay? Give this a quick toss. This is for the gram because I'm going to be bougie and do this the right way. All right. And now we're going to plate this, guys. My favorite part. We're going to go right here. Before we do that, we need another sip of wine. Anthony's dad wants a doggy bag. Well, dog, of course, Carm, come on. I'll just make this at the house. I'll come over and make it. All right. All right, we're gonna save this for the girls because they deserve it. I can't say no to that. Oh, you can't have meat, right? I can't have meat. You're oh, right. I'm sorry. No, you're good. All right, now, finishing touches. Regatta cheese, okay? Whip it up a little bit. Nice little dollop on top. All right. Take your nutmeg, a little bit right on top of the cheese, and a little bit on top of the pasta. You want to see that at the bottom, all right? And then last but not least, a little bit of olive oil on top of the cheese. And that's it, guys. Looks so Absolutely amazing. Good. It smells delicious. It Smell. looks fantastic. When so, is the next pasta making class? Couple weeks. So, Rasha Telly, pork sausage ragu with black lacinato kale, rigotta, and nutmeg. Next pasta class, I believe, is in a few weeks at White Bowl. And then after that, we're doing two weeks later, I believe it's going to be at Grana. And then we'll do another live next Thursday, I believe. Guys, enjoy it. It really is amazing. Um, and I hope you guys made this at home. If you did, please tag us in it. Um, and if you guys want to see something else that we haven't made yet, if you don't want it to be pasta related, you want to do some other Italian dishes, just let us know. All right? Thank you. Who else asked some questions before I got to go? <laughs> if Jesus were plated, that's it. Who said that? Jay. What do you say? If Jesus were plated, that's him. <laughs> Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. How do, How do we, we book, book the classes? classes? So uh, you book the classes on Eventbrite. So it's on Eventbrite, yep. Um, but what is how does it work? They you got to go to Instagram, Instagram to the, the link. The link is in the Instagram, but if you just Google it okay. through Eventbrite, it will come up. Okay, cool. Hey, what she said. <laughs> now you're gonna want to listen to her, for sure. All right, so we got Matt Skinner. What up, guys? Reed, thank you, brother. You're looking good as always, my man. Thank God you took care of that thing on your neck. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just embarrassed you on national uh, Instagram <laughs> and Facebook, and I apologize. Uh, Dana, love you. Um, I'll see you guys soon. Bill, I'll see you soon. Hopefully, I can uh, meet up with all you guys at the same time while I'm up in a couple weeks. Thank you, guys. And uh, that's the biggest one we've done so far, right? 20 people. It had 25. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Please hit the
finish on this? Yes. 